Hi, this is Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextral Gunfighter. You know, I could easily do a video on why the 9mm pistol is better than the 22 for a concealed carry weapon for self-defense. But what would be the fun in that? Everybody knows that. So let's look at why the kel P17 is the best CCW pistol of any caliber. Number one is uh, everybody seems to underestimate the power of the 22 cartridge, its effectiveness. Now, if you look at Greg Elifritz's data, which he has extensive data collection on uh, shootings throughout the United States over a period of decades, he found that the 22 long rifle incapacitates in 1.38 rounds whereas the 9mm incapacitates in 2.45 rounds. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I like something in, that incapacitates a little bit quicker. Why that's happening, I don't know. Now, the uh, NATO and U.S. Army has a, did some research, and it's featured in their handbook on human vulnerability. So I understand the research for the handbook was done at the Aberdeen Proving Ground. What was the basis for that study? It was based on a uh, live animal test done from 1946 until it was made illegal in 1986. So, the study claims there is no difference between 22 and centerfire? And what they found was that hits to vital areas like the brain, you know, spine, femur, heart, major arteries have equal probability of one-stop shop for any of the calibers whether 22 long rifle, 9 millimeter, or 45 ACP. So what about non-vital areas? Hits to non-vital areas have equal probability per hit and have equal effectivity per hit for any of the calibers, 22 long rifle, 9 millimeter, and 45 ACP. Really? So caliber is irrelevant? Outside the high effectivity, low probability hits. Incapacitation only happens by blood loss, but each hit has for 22, 9 millimeter, 45, equal practical effectivity. And the probability of reducing time to incapacitation is based on number of hits rather than caliber. So then that takes us to what, what about rate of fire? Which can you shoot faster, 9 or 22? Most people can shoot a 22 about uh, two to three times faster than they can a nine millimeter. So if you can shoot the 22 faster, that means you're gonna get more hits on target, thereby increasing the probability of reducing that time of, to incapacitation of the, of the threat. Now another advantage of the 22 is because of its light recoil, which is one of the fact, one of the reasons you can shoot it so fast, is you can also shoot it from cover, and in particularly from awkward positions from behind cover, where you don't have your wrist locked, maybe don't have that full two-handed grip, and uh, so maybe reaching around a a, uh, a ballistic shield or something, and. So maybe you've even got your wrist bent at a weird angle, but you could still shoot a 22. 9 millimeter, it's going to be a little bit more of a problem to be accurate with it, with your you know wrist bent at an odd angle or from odd positions. Another advantage of the kel P17 is the paddle magazine release. Now uh, there are 9 millimeter pistols that carry that have a paddle magazine release, but none of the really popular concealed carry pistols. H&K VP9 series does have paddle magazine release, as does the uh, Walther PPQ M1 Classic 9mm, but those are larger pistols and not really particularly well suited for, you know, really concealed carry. The paddle magazine release advantage, number one for me, is it's it's uh, well protected when you've got it in a holster and it's protected from as accidental disengagement of the magazine. Like if you get bumped, bump into something, or, or fighting on the ground, rolling around the ground, far less likely that a paddle magazine release is going to accidentally disengage your magazine. Whereas uh, 
these nine millimeter pistols you know they the magazine buttons these button magazine releases uh, if you're rolling around on the ground with these it's pretty easy for them to get accidentally disengaged and that means if your magazine falls out or is, or is disengaged you fire that first shot that you've got in the chamber and now you have an empty pistol until you pick up the magazine off the ground and, and reintroduce it into the magazine well. Another advantage of the paddle magazine release that it is perfectly mirrored ambidextrous left and right. So once you become an ambidextral gunfighter and can shoot from cover, make an optimal use of cover, uh, the paddle magazine release is a benefit for that as well. Also, pinch operation means you can shake out a magazine by pushing the paddle magazine release and ma while maintaining a firm grip on the pistol. Now what about rounds per size and weight? Uh, we've got the P17 with the, which has a magazine capacity of 16 rounds and here we have our uh, SIG P365XL which normally has a 12 round magazine but I've upgraded mine to the uh, Mag Guts 14 round magazine. So I'm going to use the Mag Guts just to give the SIG the best, you know, the best numbers for it. So the P365XL with 14 rounds weighs 781 grams. The P-17 loaded with 16 rounds weighs 418 grams. A P-17 16 round magazine weighs 79 grams. That means that the P-17, with the P-17 you can carry 4.59 extra magazines, that is 5.59 magazines total, and have this exact same equal weight as a SIG P-365 with just one 14 round magazine. In other words, almost 90 rounds of 22 long rifle versus 14 rounds of 9 millimeter. So we have 90 rounds of 22, 14 rounds of 9 millimeter. Now if you remember from Greg Elifritz's data, it takes 1.38 rounds of 22 for incapacitation against an attacker and 2.45 rounds of 9 millimeter to incapacitate an attacker. That means that with 90 rounds, you have to divide 90 by 1.38, we have got 65 incapacitations with these 90 rounds versus 5.7 incapacitations of 9 millimeter. So let's look at opportunity cost from that perspective. Which is better, carrying a P365 with just 14 rounds in the magazine or a P-17 with just one, rat, one 16 round magazine plus a tourniquet plus a quick clock and say a decent knife. You know your chances of facing a deadly force self-defense encounter is far less than having to deal with life threatening a life-threatening bleeder. So I think carrying an IFAC, an individual first aid kit, really is probably for most people most likely going to be the thing that saves their lives or the lives of a loved one. Too many are overly overly obsessed with firearms over these first aid first aid items as well as over personal fitness or dietary health. You often hear I wouldn't trust my life to a 22 or I wouldn't trust my life to a Caltech P17. All while they trust their health to McDonald's trust their fitness to the lazy boy recliner and their circulatory system to EMTs who are more than 15 minutes away. Even when looking at just your self-defense dollar, maybe it makes more sense to go with the more affordable 22 firearm option and pair that with some mat time at one of Tim Larkin's Fundamentals of Modern Self-Protection courses. Always keep opportunity cost in mind. Let's look at practice. The cost of live fire practice, 22 versus 9 millimeter. You know, um, Blazer Brass, I just recently bought uh, and fortunately got pretty good prices given today's environment, but I bought uh, 50 rounds for $20. So Blazer Brass say is at, at uh, 40 cents a round. And then I also got uh, recently on sale was some Agula, to, I got 250 round box for $15. So six cents a round. That's 6.67 rounds of 22 per every one round of 9 millimeter. 
to, to practice 10,000 rounds every year with your 9 millimeter is going to cost $4,000. Whereas practicing, getting that 10,000 rounds of practice with your 22 is going to cost you $600. Now, do you really want to spend over, say, a lifetime of, say, like uh, 60 years, nearly a quarter of a million dollars on practice with your 9 millimeter? I think most people aren't going to do that, and that's why so few people are ever any of have much proficiency with their pistols. Now one advantage the 9mm has is that you can use a a training laser which it makes makes is very useful for dry fire practice. Now for the, either the center fire pistols or for the 22 if you got that mount a rail here you can run the Mantis X10 Elite to help help you with your dry fire practice. Since the 9mm can use a laser that acts as a snap cap to kind of take a little bit of load off of the, the striker. Uh, the 22s uh, are very sensitive and susceptible to uh, firing pin damage if you dry fire them, which is why we came up with this firing pin block for the P17s. Be sure and check out our video on the firing pin block for the P17, link down in the description. Now one thing I also really like about the Keltec P17 is this standard uh, accessory rail on which you can mount a Mantis X10 Elite. Now, of the 9mm pistols that I own, uh, my Mossberg MC2C and my uh, Springfield Armory Hellcat uh, do accept the Mantis 10 training aid. However, my MC2SC will not accept it, and my SIG P365XL will not accept it unless I put one of those uh, adapters that converts from this proprietary rail to a standard pick type rail. Now another way in which the kel P17 is just so wonderful is the trigger. It has an exceptional trigger, really decent little reset, and uh, just so much easier to fire accurately with this pistol than with any of the 9mm pistols that I own. Uh, the problem with the striker fired 9mm pistols is that you're dragging, typically are dragging that nub across the striker box safety to disengage it. And uh, that generates a lot of friction, grittiness, and um, heaviness. And with the manual safety on the Keltec P17 coupled with a hammer fired firing pin um, that's what makes for such an excellent trigger on this pistol and it, it actually is played out in my Mantis X10 results and uh, my scores are much better I'm, I'm just Mantis X10 scores are much better with the Caltech P17 than any of my 9 millimeter pistols including my SIG P365XL which does have a pretty good trigger for a 9 millimeter pistol but still not as good as the Caltech P17 and, and this is under dry fire it's not like there's no I'm not we're not talking about live fire situation the data this is dry fire data and so it's not recoil related it's just simply almost almost a certainly uh, due to the better trigger on the Caltech P17 and uh, not only are, are my scores on average much better with the P17 but my highest scores uh, like really high scores have all been with the Caltech P17 and um, not only that but even one-handed scores with the P17 I'm getting one-handed scores that are on the Caltech P17 that are equal to my two-handed scores with the nine millimeter pistols I think one of the reasons that point shooting with this one-handed point shooting with the Caltech P17 works so well is because of this high grip ratio that is the ratio of the length of the grip to the width of the grip which allows you to just by gripping it immediately know in which direction with considerable precision that that muzzle is pointed versus some of these other pistols like the SIG that have more of a squarish roundish grip so it's easier to get just a little bit off and not quite point shoot as well the this high grip ratio on the Caltech P17 matches up better with the joints on your finger to where your joints break right at the leading edge of the grip and then curve right around and then the next joint there comes right around the other opposite side of the leading edge of the grip. So I think that's uh, 
another benefit to the Keltec P17. Now while the Keltec P17 does have good ambi controls as far as the uh, safety switch and the paddle magazine release, it does not have an ambi slide release. Uh, so it's pretty much for ambidextrous use you're going to definitely do the slingshot. Now actually the slide stop slide release on this is pistol is not very good it uh, while it starts out all right um, if you use it for a slide release more than a few times it wears out pretty quickly and it basically will not stay locked back unless you're it's like a mouse trap you you lock that back and then it's could very easily you know drop forward this pistol has not uh, been used too heavily with the uh, slide release so it does all right but uh, the one that I've got a lot of miles on here I, I almost cannot even keep the slide locked back I have to kind of hold that slide up and now like I said it's like a, a mouse trap and, and it wants to drop forward with just a slight tap you know it'd be nice if someone could make a, a third party would make a, a a more durable slide stop slide release for these pistols uh, although I, I I don't worry about it too much but it would be nice just to have a, a little more more durable slide stop slide release now the ambidextra safety is really awesome I, it's man it's just like the RDB the Keltec RDB has an excellent safety where it's just a short throw safety and this is even shorter slow slow a shorter throw safety maybe I don't know 15 20 30 degrees I mean not very much at all and it's just super ergonomic I mean just so easy to operate um, and then of course being ambidextrous um, and and I think for this pistol a manual safety makes a lot of sense because it has such a light uh, trigger another advantage of the manual safety is that uh, with the pistols with the manual safety you don't have to have that uh, nub on the trigger bar disengaging a firing pin block so I'm actually kind of digging the idea of kind of going back to the old-school manual safety instead of these uh, you know nine millimeter pistols that rely on a uh, either the trigger dongle or that and then also that firing pin block with the nub on the trigger bar that drags across it now another cool thing about the Keltec P17 is field stripping is <laughs> super easy you basically got your tabs up here up front that kind of look like a Glock uh, like, you know originate on the Glocks but uh, this is like so easy and then you can actually use this to to clear a malfunction I mean you can just pull that buck kind of dump shake things out back in back in business so that's I really like that <laughs> Now as far as sights, it has some decent sights on here. It's got this uh, kind of a blacked out rear sight and then this uh, fiber optic front sight, which it works fine. Um, I would kind of like to see one of those FT bullseye sights by Mep Meprolite. Uh, I like what's on the SIG uh, P365 SAS. That would be cool if we could mount one of those on here. Now we have experimented with running a red dot on this, these pistols. Uh, Caltech does not recommend it, but uh, uh, I do have an adapter plate that I've tried on there that uh, purchased online and it a really nice little adapter plate uh, I'm not really keen on using adapter plates to mounting optics because it does raise them up a little more and adds weight and all that but I was able to get uh, this pistol to work with a red dot I did have to run uh, you know a higher velocity ammo like a velocitor but uh, did just fine you know really the slide is just not designed I mean you could come up somebody could a uh, third party maybe could make a new one of a different one of these slides that uh, basically eliminated this uh, plastic cover back here and came back with the metal plate that came down with the serrations on the side and then had a direct spot for the to mount directly onto here for the red dot so that'd be one way to do that to get the because what you'd have to do is get the weight of the slide coupled with the red dot to be the the same as the stock slide I think uh, Caltech has done a little bit of experimenting with that so maybe we'll see something that like that in the future but with this high grip ratio and it's excellent for point shooting um, it points so well I really don't think that I need a red dot uh, and I can rely on the irons for when I do need to go from point shooting to sided shooting although it would be nice to have maybe have a tritium front sight for this pistol now the uh, pistol is just so easy to operate uh, 
And so under our bloody hand test last year, we found this is one of the pistols that you could, I mean, it, the slide serrations are nothing to speak of, but given the light slide, it's, uh, we don't need very much serrations to, to run it. I mean, you can actually work the slide on this with your pinky just right off the front side if you need to. So manipulation is just super easy. Now holsters, uh, uh, Forge Tech made an outside the waistband holster, which I got, which I have actually on right here, right now, an outside the waistband holster from Forge Tech, which I really like. Until only recently did they start making inside the waistband holster. And so last year I had to do my own, make my own do-it-yourself holster, and uh, which I've got uh, several of them kind of distributed throughout different, uh, different carry methods. And, uh, which are working great. The ones I've homemade versions, they work great. But you, you can get a, Kel a holster for the Caltech P17 on Amazon, and uh, and also, like I say, Forge Tech. Now let's let's assume that you are really proficient with your nine millimeter, and you're so proficient with your nine millimeter that you know it just you know uh, does it make sense to go with the 22? I don't know. You know, ignoring the fact that this stops in 1.38 rounds and this stops in 2.45 rounds. I don't know why that happens, but uh, that's what the data says. And then also, the NATO, like I said, the NATO and U.S. Army Handbook on Human Vulnerability says that, that the 22, 9, and 45 ACP are all just, they're, they're a wash as far as caliber. But one other thing to think of is your family members. Now, you may have family members who do not train that much, like, like maybe people who are watching this video family members that are not going to train as much maybe your wife your daughter or whatever and uh, so a 22 is probably going to be better for them less recoil easier to become proficient with it and affordable okay if you're going to have if your wife's going to have a p17 say or and your daughter or whoever else in your family your significant other maybe you should consider that Maybe you should get one, uh, carry a P17 as well, just for the fact that you'll have magazine compatibility with the rest of your family members. Now, the cost of the P17 is another thing where it's just amazing. I mean, the retail, suggested retail price is like 200 bucks. Now, good luck finding them for that price right now. They're in such high demand that you'll probably have to pay 50%, maybe 80% more than retail price to even get one of these right now, unless you just luck out and one comes in the local gun shop and you manage to snag it right up but you can at one time you could buy two or three of these for the cost of or a sig now what about reliability a lot of people are worried about the 22 caliber rimfire cartridge of course with your carry 22 a concealed carry pistol 22 you're going to want to use high quality ammo whether it's the uh, like cci mini mag cci velocitor maybe Federal Punch, some others. And then also, I suggest running uh, Century Solutions Dry Lube. Now why I like Century Solutions Dry Lube is that it makes the pistol more or less self-cleaning. And with 22 ammo being dirty, that's one of the things that kind of just foul thing, fouls things up. If you get a P17, when you get it, clean it, dry lube it with uh, Century Solutions Tough Glide, uh, but I wouldn't take apart the, the bolt head and the firing pin until you've gone maybe 500 rounds and then disassemble it and clean that out. You'll find it's all gooey and gunky. And, uh, and then Sentry Solutions that apply Sentry Solutions to the uh, firing pin channel on this pistol. And then you would probably go every 1500 rounds between uh, cleaning the bolt. Now I clean, you know, I clean uh, the main parts of the pistol uh, after every every trip to the range. Another thing you want to do is, in, you know, inspect and maintain your P17 very well. You know, look for uh, screws that are coming loose. I mean, these are kind of a Frankenstein-looking pistol with all these screws all the way around with this clamshell construction. So, you know, just keep an eye on the screws. Make sure they don't come loose.
Now, one thing to keep in mind is with these striker fire pist pistols, like the 9mm SIG, uh, we found that, uh, you know, with these ones that they're very difficult to clean the striker channel, unlike the Mossberg series, that's the advantage of the Mossberg, is you can easily clean the striker channel. But with not being able to easily clean the striker channel, that maintenance often gets uh, left undone. And uh, you'll end up with uh, some kind of a tall guy light strikes because that just gets gummy in that channel. So that's one of the kind of disadvantages of the 9mm striker fire pistols is that, you know, just because you, you think that's going to be super reliable, but if you don't take care of these, these can become unreliable too. So in my opinion, a striker fire 9 that sees no striker channel maintenance is going to be far less reliable than a well-kept P17 with good ammo. So, in summary, consider the unexpected effectiveness of the 22 caliber cartridge. Consider that you can get more practice with the 22 caliber cartridge and thereby become much more proficient with your 22 CCW pistol. 22 is easier to shoot from awkward positions say fighting from the ground. It's less likely with the paddle magazine release on the P-17 you're less likely to accidentally disengage the magazine. Exceptional rounds per size and weight. Excellent trigger. Index as well for point shooting. And easily field strips. Ease of manipulation with bloody hands. Slippery hands. And compatibility with non-enthusiast family members. It's Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextra Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Get yourself a Caltech P17. You'll see what I'm talking about.